This is Five on Your Side at noon, focused on you. It was a rainy start to this 4th of July holiday. A heavy downpour battered the by state all morning long. The rain is done for now, but more is on the way. Thanks for joining us at noon. I'm Sydney Stallworth. Kay Quinn has the day off. We're in a weather impact alert day today. Let's get on over to our meteorologist Gary Frank. Gary, when can we expect even more rain to move in. Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, closer to sunset, which is close to the fireworks displays that we're all looking ahead. We've got a nice dry stretch after a significant rain fell this morning between three to five inches in some cases, prompting all those flash flood warnings that were at the bottom of your screen and Anthony was tracking for you as well. And a lot of rain in my house, especially sun trying to come out now. That's starting to warm things up a little bit as we look downtown as the parade comes to a close. That was dry for the most part, despite having some rain early. 81 degrees, the southwest breeze at five miles an hour, and it's incredibly sticky still with our dew points in the low 70s. That saturation in the air from at the surface all the way above the surface is aiding to the fact that we had all that rain that settled in slowly moving, and we had this disturbance that moved from the west to the east, and that is not our cold front just yet, but that's what we're looking at ahead. Now, throughout the rest of the afternoon, a slight risk for severe weather, part of our weather impact alert day as we continue to look at things here the rest of the day. I do think that as we look ahead as well, the flood watch is probably more of a concern now through one o'clock Friday because any sort of rain will be impactful here into the afternoon and evening hours. So throughout this afternoon, expect as we look throughout this afternoon, we're going to start to monitor the trends as storms develop, how they impact us and types of severe weather, how much rain we can expect from this next round of storms. We'll talk about that in just about 10 minutes. All right. Thank you so much, Gary. And remember to stay with five on your side all day for weather updates on air on KSDK.com and on the five plus app. And you can just text the word weather to 314-425-5355 and we'll send you the forecast straight to your phone. Today's weather causing problems for many Independence Day celebrations. Some fireworks displays have already been postponed. Take a look. The Kirkwood Freedom Festival rescheduled its event from tonight to tomorrow. Millstadt, Illinois fireworks were supposed to happen tonight, but will now happen tomorrow as well. And the Troy Rotary Club in Missouri says they have postponed their fireworks. We'll find out the new date of the show at a later time. To find a full list of these changes, all you have to do is go to our website. That's KSTK.com. Another local celebration announced changes to its plans today. Bridgeton. Today's fireworks show is now canceled. Our newsroom found a post from the City Rec Center on social media. They say they haven't decided on a rescheduled date just yet, but they'll update people online when they do. St. Charles is hosting a festival today. The Due Day River Fest is underway as we speak. The River Fest parade that was scheduled for this morning, though, was canceled. As of now, the fireworks are still scheduled to happen as long as there's no thunder or lightning. And if you go out there, there'll be some food, drinks, live music and carnival rides. Well, this wet weather didn't stop one town from celebrating. Webster Groves marched on with their Community Days Parade this morning. Residents started lining up their chairs yesterday. The parade made its way down Lockwood and Mason and ended at Memorial Park. Take a look at your screen. Downtown St. Louis also celebrated the 4th with a parade this morning. America's Birthday Parade made its way past our station down Market Street. It just wrapped up. It's the first part of the Celebrate St. Louis Fest. This festival is also going to have an air show, an eSports tournament, and a series of concerts that starts at 4 o'clock tonight. And it all wraps up with a fireworks show. All right, now Highway 70 is reopened after being shut down for hours. Take a look at this. This is what happened. A viewer sent this video to our newsroom. A tractor trailer crashed and then caught fire. This all happened at 530 this morning on Highway 70 near Highway Z in Wentzville. All the lanes are back open right now and traffic is flowing normally. Today, St. Louis County Police are investigating a shooting that sent a child to the hospital. Last night, officers were called to Pritchard Drive in North County. They found a 10 year old who'd been shot. Police say that child was taken to the hospital with life threatening injuries. A man was taken into custody in connection to this shooting. Police are asking anyone who has any information to contact Crime Stoppers. That number is right there on your screen. It's 1-866-371-TIPS. 
Children falling victim to gun violence is a growing problem in our country, which is why experts want to remind people to keep guns safely stored away. Right now, a three-year-old girl is bringing attention to the importance of safely storing your weapons. NBC's Maggie Vespa has this story. Getting Sky McBride to pick a favorite stuffed animal is a tough task. She's a bubbly three-year-old with no memory of the moment her life changed. But her maternal aunt and grandmother wish they could forget the day a relative knocked on the door saying something happened to Skye at her dad's house in Flint, Michigan. He says, Skye has been shot in the head and I just lost my mind. I was just screaming. I was jumping up and down. I was screaming. Skye was at the hospital in a coma. I thought I was stuck in a nightmare. Investigators said she'd gotten a hold of her father's revolver, left loaded and unlocked on a bed, and shot herself in the face. He said he forgot. He was so excited to see her. You don't forget about something like that. You don't. Like, that sounds absurd to yeah, you. Yeah, it is. Sky's tragedy doubling as a legal landmark. Her father, Michael Tolbert, is the first person charged under Michigan's safe storage law, requiring owners keep their guns unloaded and locked or stored in a locked box if they believe a child is likely to be present. The maximum penalty for failing and allowing a child to shoot themselves or someone else, 15 years in prison. Genesee County Prosecutor David Layton lobbied for the law. I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in gun ownership, but you have to be responsible. There were more than 400 unintentional shootings by children last year. 26 states, including Michigan, now have similar laws. If uh, grown-ups aren't going to be responsible gun owners and lock those guns away, then government has to step in. Some gun rights activists argue safe storage laws violate the Second Amendment, pointing to a Supreme Court decision that established the right for people to keep guns for protection in their homes. We certainly strongly advocate and encourage that, uh, that people act in a responsible manner. But the Supreme Court has said that laws that mandate firearms be locked in, and so therefore not accessible to a person to use for self-protection, violates the Second Amendment. So you doing your stickers? Yeah. As for Sky, she lost her right eye. This is the baby mama. That's the baby? But her family says she has no apparent brain damage and is mastering walking. Her father has pleaded not guilty and hasn't responded to NBC News' interview requests. Meanwhile, since Sky's shooting, Michigan's seen at least two other safe storage cases, including in May when investigators say a two-year-old boy shot himself. This time, it was fatal. David Layton has charged the boy's father and two other relatives. This is preventable. First. Yeah, mm. this is it's preventable. Lock your gun up. You're the adult. Put it away. Maggie Vespa, NBC News, Flint, Michigan. Changes on the way for Illinois schools. The test requirement that's making a comeback. And later, we take you to the table for a 4th of July tradition. The change is ahead for Nathan's hot dog eating contest. 